Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're going to take a look at some common myths or misconceptions when it comes to short-barreled rifles. I am a fan of the short-barreled AR platform, but I do recognize that there can be some potential trade-offs. One thing that you see come up every now and then is, you, generally there's, there's two topics of discussion that come up when we talk about short-barreled rifles. Now, for the AR platform, uh, arguably originally designed um, for a certain barrel length, 20-inch, um, 18-inch, 16-inch, 14.5, uh, what is the optimal barrel length? Well, the, the round really does perform better out of longer than shorter barrels. But that doesn't mean that you can't get acceptable performance or reasonable or good performance out of a short, shorter barreled platform. However, based on the characteristics of what we want rifle rounds to do and how they're the most effective, we do have to pay special close attention to not only the round that we're using, but the barrel length that we're using it out of. Generally, uh, to get the favorable ballistic, terminal ballistic capabilities out of a round, I need to be able to hit a certain feet per second out of whatever my barrel length is going to be. Arguably between 24 and 2500 feet per second based on the round and the characteristics of the round. There aren't a whole lot of guns out there capable, or, or actually I don't know of too many guns at all capable of 24, 2500 feet per second uh, in the 7.5 inch. Uh, length, which is why I don't choose or I don't own any uh, guns that short. I generally will not, or I should say I will not, go shorter than 10 inches. Uh, 10 inches is the, 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 the minimum length that I'm willing to accept for a self-defense or a duty rifle in the AR platform. 12.5 um, is a good length, 14.5 is what, the, what, what you see the most in the military. Uh, law enforcement you see between 10 and 14. Those are shorter than what the round was intended to be fired from, you know, 18, 20, even 22, 24 inch guns. Uh, so am I still getting good performance out of the shorter barrels to make it worth it? What do I gain with a shorter barrel? Well, the biggest answer to that question is maneuverability, concealability. Uh, it makes the rifle a little bit more versatile for a wide range of applications versus it just being a dedicated long range SPR type platform. Uh, so you see law enforcement for SWAT purposes, indoor CQB, whatever you want to call it, the shorter guns just maneuver better. Sure, I mean, uh, there's prob probably people watching this video right now that your grandfather or great grandfather, you know, he cleared houses in France using a Garand. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It's just not something that's recommended uh, for versatility and maneuverability. The shorter guns are going to get the job done. But do, is the ballistics still going to be there? Uh, we're going to look at the ballistics in two aspects. We're going to look at accuracy and then we're going to look at terminal ballistics using ballistic gel. For the purpose of this video, uh, I'll be using two different SBRs. I'll be using an SMOS upper uh, in 10 inches with a 1 in 7 twist 2 to 3 wild chamber. And I'll also be using a primary weapon systems Mark 112, which is a 12 inch, 12.85 uh, inch barrel uh, in the same chamber, 2 to 3 wild. But this gun will be in a 1 in 8 twist. This isn't a comparison between the two guns necessarily, of course, because the chambers are, or the twist rates are different. Um, but it is a look at two different SBR, two different common SBR lengths. Now, there's uh, some people produce 11, 11.5, 11.85. I've seen 10.2, I've seen 10.5, 10.85. There are a bunch of different uh, lengths available in each inch category, but the most common ones you see. 10, 12, 14, 5. Um, so I wanted to offer uh, a 10 inch gun and something just two inches and change longer to show the difference between the two once we get to terminal ballistics. But as far as accuracy goes, accuracy is an easy thing to demonstrate. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'll be using the same round in both guns the entire time. I'll be using the Black Hill 77 grain OTM. Uh, you might also know it as the Mark 262. Uh, it's a great round, it's a highly accurate round, it is my go-to round for proving accuracy on a platform. So to get the accuracy myth out of the way, first up is my SMOS, I'm firing that 77 grain OTM. Uh, we're shooting out at the zero distance of 100 yards. And here is the primary weapon systems Mark 112 Mod 1, shooting same distance, 100 yards. Yeah. 
So if you're doing your mental measuring math at home, you can see that both guns are within one MOA, uh, sub one MOA, not counting for flyers. Um, Accuracy is not an issue. Uh, I shoot both of these guns regularly at the three, 400 meters. Um, now the envelope for the round out of that gun, uh, you are going to lose, uh, you're starting off with less muzzle velocity, so it's you're not going to get the same kinetic energy at distance that you would get out of, say, a 14 or a 16 or 18 inch, and I don't think anybody's debating that. But what, it, what kind of muzzle velocity are we seeing out of these two guns? Well, here's a look at the SMOS, uh, same round, 77 grain, Black Hills, OTM. And here is the primary weapon systems Mark 112 Mod 1. Check, taking a look at that muzzle velocity. So the muzzle velocity is close to in the neighborhood of acceptable muzzle velocity for ideal terminal ballistics out of that round or out of the 223 slash 556 round in general. Now, when we start looking at ballistic gel, we're looking for two things. We're looking at penetration and fragmentation. Having both is ideal for the rifle based on the wounding characteristics of the rifle round. There's a wealth of information out there if we want to get into the, the minutia and the very specifics of ballistics. And if you choose to use a, a 223-556 platform for duty or for home defense, I highly recommend that you have a really good understanding of what you're looking for in ideal performance. Um, but just as a brief overview, uh, I'm going to get a permanent wound cavity, cavity. I'm going to get a temporary wound cavity. Temporary wound cavity is going to be created by the velocity of the round. Now, the velocity of the round, the lighter the round, um, sometimes uh, causes more fragmentation, but I'm looking for fragmentation as well as a secondary. Uh, the biggest wounding properties of the rifle round itself is going to be that temporary wound cavity, which can be two to three times larger on expansion than what you're going to see with the permanent cavity, even if the round happens to fragment, tumble, yaw, pitch, uh, all these things that bullets can do uh, when striking uh, ballistic media or real life human beings. Now, for ballistic testing, I'm using 10% calibrated ballistic gel from Clear Ballistics. 10% is considered to be pretty much the testing standard to simulate human tissue. It does not simulate things like bone or, or other uh, media that you'd encounter inside the body. It's just simulating muscle mass, tissue, fat, things of that nature. Um, ideal penetration. Uh, is, is something that comes up often. People want to know why, why do you want 12 or 18 inches of ideal penetration? Well, think about the concept that, that we're not able to simulate bone inside the ballistic gel, so that extra distance, penetration distance, is something that factors into that. And another factor is where is the round fired from in relation to the human form? Remember, people are three-dimensional, even though a lot of us spend our time just shooting 2D paper. If you consider a shot fired from, from different angles, different angles mean more travel to reach critical areas of the body. So if a round was fired from say on your back into a standing thread, the round is going to have to travel further to get to that high thoracic package depending on where it enters. So that's also factored into the science of terminal ballistics when it comes to checking how well rounds perform. Now I'll be shooting both rifles at four distances. I'm going to do 10 yards, 25 yards, 50 yards, and finally 100 yards on both guns, showing you the ballistic gel uh, and then the extracted rounds as they fragment it. So without further ado, let's get started at the 10 yard mark with the SMOS. That first shot was, shot was actually surprising to me. While we did get 19 inches of penetration, we had very poor fragmentation at 10 yards out of that 10 inch gun. One in seven twist, two to three wild chamber firing the, uh, the 77 grain OT in Black Hills. Let's see if the PWS fared any better. Here's a PWS Mark 112 Mod 1 at the same distance 10 yards. We only got 18 inches of penetration, um, as far as I can tell. Um, sometimes those micro fragments, you miss them in the gel, or they exit the gel body and you don't know where they went, so you can't measure. But uh, that penetration distance, and we had some pretty good fragmentation and some spiraling uh, of the actual fragments themselves. So that would have been a really good wound channel. 
um, based on that distance on that barrel length. Next up, we're moving on to 25 yards. Here's the SMOS 10 inch upper. We had 16 inches of penetration with very wide fragmentation and a good permanent wound channel. Uh, I was very impressed. Even though I didn't get 18 inches of penetration, uh, I got 16 inches with very, very solid fragmentation, which is a pretty good trade-off considering what I'm wanting the round to do. Now let's see how the PWS Mark 112 Mod 1 fares at 25 yards. Twenty two inches of penetration with very wide fragmentation in the ten percent calibrated ballistic shell. Uh, as you can see, these guns are close to each other in length, but they do have a different twist rate. Uh, and that definitely factors into some of the performance discrepancies between the two the between the two guns. Because as as you can see, barrel length and twist rate are definitely a factor. The one in seven is very, very it lends itself very, very well to the one in one in seven barrel. The seventy-seven grain, one in seven barrel is a match made in heaven, according to some people. Uh, I prefer to shoot the seventy-seven grain. I won't go over a one in eight. I don't own any one in nine guns. Uh, one in nine, the seventy-seven probably wouldn't stabilize very well from from everything I've heard. I've never personally tried it myself. Uh, but I've never been a fan of the, the one in nine because you're just so limited in what rounds you can use in it. Here is the SMOS at 50 yards, 77 grain OTM. Nineteen inches of penetration with again wide fragmentation. It seems like uh, once we got past ten yards, uh, the rounds started performing as they should. We're getting good fragmentation, good permanent wound cavities, um, and, and uh, good penetration distances. And that's definitely what we want. Now we're out to fifty. Consider the distance that we're at right now: fifty yards. For a lot of people, that's going to be well within their reasonable self-defense envelope for the use of an AR platform. And inside, in a home defense situation, uh, you're probably already beyond the maximum distance that you're able to shoot inside your home for a self-defense type setting. Uh, so uh, for, and I can't say definitively that you'd never have to take a shot farther than that, but once we get past 50, we get into PID issues. Can you actually see and positively identify what you're shooting at to begin with? Um, just being able to see a person isn't necessarily enough to be able to say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and shoot at this distance. Uh, so at the 50 yard mark, that 10 inch gun is still doing pretty well. Now let's take a look at the primary weapon systems Mark 112 at the same distance. Only 15 inches of penetration with decent fragmentation. Uh, so there's there's definitely some performance inconsistencies that are now really setting themselves apart between the two barrel lengths, between the two twist rates. Uh, ideally, what I would like to have done uh, is is um, compared two identical guns with just slightly different barrel lengths. Uh, I wasn't able to do that, but again, it's not a comparison. It's just showing you how two different SBRs are performing under the same conditions. 100 yards is, is, ballistically speaking, a pretty long way for terminal ballistics. Uh, there have been plenty of people who've pointed to the fact that the military's chosen round, or, or the, the later variations of the chosen round, the M855, M855A1, loses its fragmentation capability around 80 meters. I can't verify that. That's just something that I've seen people that I would trust the knowledge from um, saying that in their, in their own uh, videos and their own articles on fragmentation and terminal ballistics uh, out of that round. Now, the 77 grain uh, OTM from Black Hills uh, is it's, it's one of the better rounds um, from people who know uh, use in uh, designating marksman rifles and for sniper applications during the war in Iraq, war in Afghanistan. It was a round that was uh, really good for urban use, more for Iraq than Afghanistan in that case. 
Uh, and I can't speak too great on that because I didn't use that round in, in that capacity in either of those countries. So I don't have any firsthand experience. But I know from guys that did, they say it performed really, really well at your intermediate distances. And I consider it to be 100 yards and in or 100 meters and in um, to be those intermediate distances at which you'd expect to need that great precision that the 77 grain can provide, but it's still going to give you good terminal ballistics. So without further ado, here's our SMOS 10 inch at 100 yards. Twenty three inches of penetration, but as far as I can tell, zero fragmentation. The round was deformed. Um, the ogive had kind of come off just a little bit, but was still hanging on like a hangnail. And the round had almost completely rotated uh, 360 degrees of face back towards uh, the entry wound. Um, the wound cavity has a lot of pitch and yaw to it, so that round definitely did the, the uh, ubiquitous tumble that some people like to talk about the round doing. I would have still preferred some fragmentation, but at 100 yards out of a 10 inch gun, I'm still getting um, some favorable ballistic capabilities out of it. Basically, it, it performed like a pistol round might at that 100, meter dist or 100 yard distance. Now let's see how the 12 inch PWS Mark 112 did. Nineteen inches of penetration with excellent fragmentation. Um, there's some good spiraling in there, good permanent wound cavity. So, between the two guns, the one that the one consistent performer that we can look at is the primary weapon systems, or I should say, barrel length, the twelve-inch gun, which was for this purpose the primary weapon systems Mark One One Two Mod One. Well, so what have we learned? 10 inches is the absolute shortest that I would ever be willing to go uh, on the 223-556 round. Now, I'm not done with this topic. This is just kind of a primer video. Um, we just fired on ballistic gel. Uh, with We didn't simulate or introduce any intermediate barriers or clothing, and we only tested one round. So look forward to further ballistic videos being done on SBR characteristics, uh, on ballistic gel, and just performance in general. Um, I may get some. I may do some round specific because there are rounds out there. There's quite a few these days that say these are specifically for ideal ballistic terminal ballistic performance in SBR. So maybe I'll pick up a couple hundred rounds of those and and see how they do on ballistic gel. And of course, I'm not the only one uh, doing this kind of testing. So you know, don't just take my word for it. There's a lot of other guys out there that do videos on ballistic performances out of barrel lengths, rounds, and, and all the things that factor into that. But I wanted to put this video together just so I have my own little touchstone that I can point people to when it comes to the two of the most common things that I hear when it comes to SBRs is they're not going to be accurate or they don't have stopping power. Stopping power is not a real thing. That's just a term that was made up to sell ammo. Uh, what you're ask, actually trying to say is terminal ballistics because a round itself based on its own properties can't actually stop anyone, at least out of small arms, unless we start to get into anti-material and anti-aircraft rounds. Um, you're looking for the ballistic performance on target terminal ballistics. We're looking for permanent temporary wound cavity, penetration, and fragmentation. Crush cavity, if you will. Uh, so that's just kind of step one when it comes to comparing um, those things. Um, in the future, like I said, I'll be doing more testing probably on these exact same two guns uh, and with different ammunition. Uh, but for those of you who didn't know, um, or are just getting into the topic, I hope this provides you with some information that will help you make a more informed purchase when you're deciding on your SBR or your pistol length that you're going to use for home defense or for duty. I'm Aaron Cowell with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.